morning everybody hope you guys are doing well my name is Rob Maynard welcome back to the channel today we're gonna be shooting some large format I haven't done that in probably four or five months uh, I've been reserving it for some projects but honestly a couple of the projects I've been working on have sort of fallen through or at least been pushed off to a later time in the year so I've been really just wanting to uh, scratch that large format itch and that's what we're gonna do today out on the farmlands So today we've chosen Kodak Ektar 100 to be our film of choice in our large format 4x5 Intrepid 4x5 Mark IV. Uh, it's kind of a, I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> but uh, we're shooting color negative film. It's a little bit more forgiving than color positive, which the last time I was out in this area shooting, uh, I was doing a lot of Provia 100F. And uh, quite frankly, that is a really difficult film to work with. And I need something a little bit more forgiving since I haven't shot large format in quite a while. Um, color negative, always, always a good choice in Ektar. Perfect. I'm gonna take a quick shot on the uh, Fuji GSW 690 Mark III, which I have some Portra 160 in. Um, I think I have it set to ISO 200. So I'm gonna take a quick meter reading before this light really starts to kind of get out of hand. It's beautiful right now, but uh, early morning light moves quick and I move slow. <laughs> that was my last, my last shot on the uh, the Fuji. So I'm gonna put some some more film in there. Probably more Portra. Why not? Why not? By the way, it's 6 a.m. That means I had to leave my house at 4:30. I'll be a little sleepy here. So I'm in the town of Northampton and uh, I've been re-inspired to come shoot in this particular area uh, after revisiting one of my favorite, uh, my favorite books, my favorite photo books by one of my favorite photographers, Joel Sternfeld called Oxbow Archive. And uh, it's really, it's an incredible book. It's really incredible to know that one of my favorite photographers used to walk these same fields all throughout uh, an entire year of hanging out here and shooting. Uh, it's just really, really an incredible piece of work and I absolutely love it, but uh, I've really been inspired to get out and try to take some shots on the large format, uh, my 4x5, and see what we get. Oh my God. 
It's magnificent. Oh, I'm pretty stoked about that. Oh, I love it. Let me get the loop real quick. Wait for that wind to just calm just a little bit. Perfect. It's just enough for that wind to stop making a couple of those little trees or the little leaves in the tree move around. It's gonna be ultra, ultra sharp. F22 metered right in between uh, sort of the closest point and then the tree, sort of an in between there. I forget what that's called. God, it's been so long since I shot large format. I've forgotten all the terms. But I think that's a good one. some serious serious clay luckily my scion xb right there oh, right there uh is just a a beautiful car it's not meant for this sort of terrain certainly not doesn't say that in the owner's manual but i will say this car can handle pretty much anything watch as i say that it's gonna not start or something <laughs> man that would be a big bummer We've got some really incredible light right now. And uh, these fields are just being tilled right now, getting prepared uh, for, for some planting. I think they, in this particular field, I think it's corn. I see a lot of downed corn stalks that are still remaining, but they're getting these, these fields prepared. In the coming months, they're gonna be filled and they're gonna be growing. And then in the, in the fall, they're going to be bright and big and beautiful. And uh, the ongoing documentation of this area will continue. So. Uh, maybe these will be in something bigger. Maybe you'll see these images somewhere else, but um, right now, we really just want to make a nice little fun video about shooting large format. Kind of a tricky dick here. Kind of a tricky dick. I might throw the 210 on at some point. Also, my loop is so dusty now. And please note, oh, hold on a second. Oh no, I'm on, I'm on autofocus, good. So you guys might be able to actually see me. So got my my little handy dandy notebook here, uh, taking notes, trying to uh, remember as many exposures as I can of shooting Portra 160 on the Fuji GSW 690, which is my medium format system, uh, shooting Ektar 100 on the 4x5. So it is a little bit confusing to go back and forth between uh, the two. It's pretty contrasty out, so I don't really want to be. Uh, killing with contrast, but even one one stop push is really not that big of a deal when it comes to um, over, under exposure. So I'm not super worried about it if I happen to miss one. Also, note that I brought a nice heavy winter coat. Well, it's not really heavy; it's lightweight. LL Bean baby, but I brought this so that I can better compose and hit critical focus. I know a lot of you guys were saying that uh, you should be bringing some sort of dark cloth with you when you are composing. And you're absolutely right, but there are so many times where I'm just like, it's kind of dark, I don't really need one. But in situations like this, something like this is absolutely warranted. I am so tired, I haven't had coffee or anything.
I can see why Sternfeld spent so much time out here. It's absolutely gorgeous, the entire area. You got these really beautiful sort of marshy areas once you get closer to the Connecticut River. And then you got these really beautiful flat plains known as the farmlands. And uh, it's just absolutely gorgeous. And you know, his thoroughness, being able to shoot it throughout an entire year from, from fall to, uh, to winter, spring, summer, and then back again to fall. Uh, it's really a, a testament to, to documentary photography uh, and landscape photography. It's, it's incredible the changes that you see over time, uh, especially in such a rich ecosystem like this. It's, uh, it's really incredible to see Sternfeld's work and, and how well it was done. I don't know if it was very well received when it came out, but uh, I love it. It's one of my favorite pieces of work by Sternfeld. And uh, maybe there's just something there that I, I like more because I live here, I live near here, I shoot here often. Maybe there's uh, that sort of like romanticized idea of like I'm, I'm standing where Sternfeld once stood. I don't know, maybe it's that, maybe it's just because the images are absolutely stellar. Or maybe it's a combination of all those things. But uh, if you haven't got that book, if you haven't looked at that book, go do so. And if you can't, can't afford it because it is expensive, uh, just go and uh, and go to Sternfeld's website, joelsternfeld.com or .net, and he has a, a list of all the images there that you can see. my pocket too. Oh man, my, my loop's got dirt all over it. Oh, maybe shouldn't have blew right into it. Oh, man. Those birds are absolutely gorgeous. All right, calm down. I'm trying to record some audio here. All right, I'm gonna try to take a quick shot with Let's not have that on. Let's focus on my face for a second here. My cigar went out. Also, before I go, uh, if you're still watching, I'd like to give away um, some of these instant images I took on Emily's Lomo Instant Wide with some Instax Wide film. Uh, there's four images total. Uh, there's some light leaks on them because <laughs> It's been sitting in my car for a couple months. But anyways, uh, I'm gonna give away, maybe I'll, I'll give away, no, I'll give away all of them. So comment, then I'll pick four random winners and send them out to you. How's that? Blown out, hair crazy. Uh, it's kind of warm out now, I should've taken my, my shirt off. All right, see you guys. <laughs>